welcome back. You're still watching Dead Break on this 16th May, 16th of May, 2023. And we're having a conversation about uh, what the president did yesterday and the cabinet secretary at Kemsa. And we are concluding on this. Senator, you had something to add on some of the sentiments that have been given by yes. Obumboy. Yes, I, w I wanted to add something. If you look <coughs> at the difference between the approach taken by Kenya Kwanzaa right now, Kenya Kwanzaa government under President uh, William Ruto and the action that was taken in the previous regime, it's like uh, once again day and night. Mm. Uh, they are very different in approach because what has happened here, it's talking about the procedure and the process. Uh, this whole procurement process has been stopped, not at the point <coughs> when Kenyans have lost money. It's not a loss of nine billion or seven billion like would have happened in the previous regime. It is, you know, making sure you preempt that loss, making sure that Kenyans don't have to walk the pain of thinking that money has once been again lost in another Kemsa scandal. Mm -hmm. So what I was expecting uh, the opposition to do this time around, I was expecting them to hit the studio applauding the president for taking uh, that action very timelessly in a very, in a very prompt fashion as expected under the constitution to ensure that uh, Kenyans do not be become the ones to pay the cost of poor management or cost of uh, uh, supply chain management that has gone so off mm -hmm. that anybody looking at it would tell something has gone wrong. Right. So before we reach there, the president has taken action and said, they look into this matter, the board, maybe you have failed in this oversight. It is more of omissions. Some of them are omissions, some are commissions. We had commission of uh, offenses in the previous regime. Was anyone charged? Did any action take place within the 21 days that had been promised by the president in the previous regime? Maybe not, but this time around, there is very decisive action to make sure that uh, Kenyans will not walk through another loss. So okay. this this is one time where I was uh, looking forward to a consensus of opinion okay. in terms of saying, yes, this is what Kenyans want to see, and not just in the Ministry of Health. In any other ministry that is uh, dealing with public resources, mm -hmm. let people be prudent in the management. Uh, the economy is not doing very well. It is in the, you know, this is when uh, Kenya Kwanzaa government is trying to mend the issues that went wrong with the economy in the previous regime. And it's definitely time to be very diligent in the management of resources. Okay. And this should go both to public uh, officers, uh, state officers. It should go through even to the private sector. Let there be support for the right things to be done within the ministry. On the question of uh, COVID, COVID billionaires, um, yes, the president had said that uh, 21 days, I think that was in September of 20, 2020. <laughs> Uh, but um, indeed, uh, by September, there's a report that uh, was uh, given by ESCC to the DPP. Then a month later, the DPP sent it back to the ESCC uh, to uh, seal some gaps that had been identified. Mm -hmm. Then the statement was given back to the DPP. DPP sent it back to the ESCC. By the time I was speaking to him, I think early in the year, mm -hmm. he was talking about there are still gaps to be sealed. I don't know what... Uh, that means it's been more than two years since that um, announcement by the president, by former president. Um, I want to take a look at some feedback that has come to us on this particular issue. Then I'll take uh, one final word from Honabu Matenge because he's a member of the health committee. Right, on Twitter, Citizen TV Kenya, Sam Gituku, the hashtag to use is uh, Debrick. Honorable Lillian Sioy says that uh, this is leadership, bold and swift. This is President Ruto. He didn't have to ask for 21 days or wait any longer to act on a scandal. He knows the buck stops with him, and it did stop with him. Ethics must prevail, and sanity must return uh, to institutions, I bet that's what you meant. Um, Sadiq Nixon, you're saying, by the way, why is Kemsa importing mosquito nets and not sourcing them locally? Was the Buy Kenya Build Kenya Drive a hoax? <coughs> Eco problem. Well, of course, um, it is sponsored by the Global Fund. The procurement rules did require that it's an international open tender, so it is open to everyone, suppliers locally, but also internationally. They are free to apply to bid and whatever. But uh, Horrible Matenke, I was asking you the question about um, what would be the um, error or the offense uh, of uh, the now, I mean, former Principal Secretary of Public Health, 
professional standards. In her writing a letter, well, uh, some two days before the expiry of the bidding period, uh, saying that you need to review the specifications. Uh, the National Treasury writes back and says, no, don't go with what the PSC is saying. Let us proceed with the procurement as it were. What would be her mistake in that? Or what is the president looking at? Let us look at uh, the whole of this procurement process and the, uh, the, 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 the legislations that guide it. Procurement exists, is, operates under two laws. One is the Public <coughs> Procurement and Disposal Act, mm -hmm. where there are responsibilities and guidelines on what a procuring entity should do, and also responsibilities and mandates of the accounting officer in a state department. Mm -hmm. The PS in a state department has overarching mandate on all the semi-autonomous government agencies under the state department because eventually, KEMSA, when it comes to look for funding right. in the budget, it doesn't come as a standalone entity. It mm -hmm. comes alone as, an ent as a department or as a, as a semi-autonomous department under the docket either of medical services or public health. Therefore, the accounting officer at the top has a responsibility to look at the processes and even the technicalities. Mm -hmm. Because in her office, she has technical officers. The question that begs well, this letter, in terms of looking at the inconsistencies in the bid documents, mm -hmm. was it based on technical advice or what was the source? And I think that is the question that then the president is seeking for the PS to answer. When we go to the COVID-19 saga that actually brought in uh, the, 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 the current, uh, the, the, the just suspended CEO at KEMSA, mm -hmm. we see the same trend. If you go to look at the report of the multi-agency task force that looked into KEMSA, and even the recommendations, and the special audit by the Office of the Auditor General on surrounding the COVID-19 uh, procurement, directives to KEMSA, letters to KEMSA originating from the ministry seems to, seemed to misdirect KEMSA from the narrow confines of the Public Finance Management Act and the uh, Public Procurement and Disposal Act. Mm -hmm. So within uh, the parameters of due diligence, sound advice, and overall responsibility, okay. sound technical advice and overall uh, uh, responsibility, as an accounting officer, the uh, peers, at the uh, at PS Public Health, had a responsibility, an oversight responsibility, and she could advise. However, mm -hmm. this procurement is donor funded, and even the specifications, and even the definition of how the tender should be, whether it is going to be national tendering or international tendering, that is a prescription of the donor, it is one of the conditions. And the Global Fund has been active in this area for a long time. The trend is set. By the way, Sam, mm -hmm. it is not the first time that the Global Fund has shifted the procurement in this country to Wabo.com. The presidents has been there. It has been done before. And, and, and therefore, there also the message going to the people who have been given responsibility of overseeing government departments, mm -hmm. that they must exercise their powers, mandate, and responsibilities with the utmost diligence. OK. All right. And I want us to make transition. Of course, Dr. Josephine Boru has been the PS in that department for 165 days. If you like, that is months, 14 days. Uh, she goes down as the shortest serving PS in the past few years. Now, to another conversation that has really um, been 